Okay, class, welcome back. We're done with the break. Okay, our virtual break. Pag-usapan na natin ngayon ang System Development Lifecycle or the SDLC. So, makikita ninyo dito, ano, meron akong hinighlight or nilagyan ko ng parang border, ano, at saka nandito pa yung arrow. To emphasize that the, the next slide we will be talking about the planning phase. Okay? Ang planning phase, mag-uumpisa yan from the time that the steering committee receives a project request. Okay? etong hinighlight ko dito. Ang committee, etong steering committee, sabi ko nga kanina sa kabilang video lecture, eto yung decision making body. Sa, well, the number really depends. Sabi kasi dito sa ano, reference book, it may consist of 5 to 9 people. And it may include yung mga mix of vice presidents, managers, non-management users, and IT personnel. Of course, it really depends on the organizational structure at saka yung laki, liit or laki ng organization. However, in any case, the steering committee will cover the four major activities. Re-review nila at aaprobahan nila yung mga project requests and that is number one. Number two, they have to prioritize the project request. Kasi maaring sabay-sabay or magkakasunod silang makatanggap ng project request. So, the review and the approval is one thing and then the prioritizing is another thing. Then, of course, once they approve, once they prioritize, they have to allocate resources, the money, the people, the equipment needed ano, to approve the project. And then, they have to form a project team. Okay, the project development team for each approved project. Now, usually, dito sa prioritization, okay, itong pagpa-prioritize ng mga projects, kung sino yung may pinakamataas na priority, sila yung mauuna. They will be given immediate attention. And then the rest, ang tawag namin sa practice, ano, nasa pipeline. Ibig sabihin, susunod yung mga yan. Okay, naka-priority nga lang. Sino mauuna? Kasi hindi pwede na sabay-sabay. We have limitation sa mga resources, no? So, either yung pera, yung tao, at saka yung mga machineries, yung mga makinarya na kinakailangan para magawa yung project na yun. Okay? So, that is the planning. Now, the next one is the analysis. Okay, under analysis, no? Meron tayong dalawang steps dito. Yung pagkakandak ng preliminary investigation and then pagpa-perform ng detailed analysis. Okay. Now, yung preliminary investigation, ito yung tinatawag natin na feasibility study. If you still recall, and I hope yes because fresh pa yun, ano, pinag-usapan natin last uh, few slides, yung feasibility study. Ano, na yung sa feasibility assessment, yung operational, yung technical, yung economy, and then, ano pa nga yung isa? Balikan nga lang natin. This one, okay? O, the schedule feasibility. So, part ito ng ating analysis phase. Okay? Now, o, let's let's go back dito. Ano? ano ang purpose ng feasibility study? Of course, to determine the exact nature of the problem or improvement and to decide whether it is worth pursuing. Okay? Within the budget, within the schedule, okay? At kung ano pa man yung mga additional consideration doon. Now, if the answer is in the affirmative, ano, edi, of course, magpo-push through yan. Okay? Should the organization continue to assign resources to the project? And that is the question. Now, to answer that, ito na yung feasibility. At usually, kinakandak ito ng systems analyst. Ang first activity dito sa feasibility study is to interview the user who submitted the project request. Yung nag-originate, no? Sino ang nag-request nito? Yun, yun, yun muna yung kausapin. Kasi, of course, we have to understand from what point he or she is coming from. Ano yung perspective niya? Now, depending on the nature of the request, project team, manage, team members may interview other users too. In addition to interviewing, members of the project team may use other data gathering techniques kagaya ng napag-usapan na natin sa previous video lecture. Review, yung kagaya ng review ng existing documentations. Usually, maiksi lang po ang feasibility study. Ano? It may take 
few days or minsan iaabot ng linggo pero hindi dapat ito matagal. Okay? O, ap, pag natapos na itong feasibility study or the preliminary investigation, o dito na nagpe-prepare ng feasibility report to properly document the findings. Okay? Tapos, ito po ay ipinipresenta sa steering committee para makita nila. Okay? In some cases, the project team may recommend not to continue the project. Okay? Siyempre, di ba, magkakandak ng feasibility study. So, kung based doon sa feasibility study, hindi siya feasible, hindi siya practicable, medyo uh, in terms of cost-benefit, uh, yung schedules, yung budget, ano, lugi, or hindi siya ganoon ka, ano no, feasible, hindi yun matutuloy. At pag nag-agree yung steering committee, tapos na yung project hanggang doon na lang. And then, yung panibago naman yung susunod. Pero, kung naaprobahan yan, edi eh, magpo-proceed na yan doon sa detailed analysis. Okay, which is the second step, no? Under the analysis phase. Or ito yung tinatawag din natin na logical design. Detailed analysis or logical design. And it involves three major activities. Study how the current system works. And, uh, intindihin, paano ba gumagana ngayon yung ating existing system? Pangalawa, ano ba yung mga kailangan ng mga users? Ano ba yung mga requirements nila? At pangatlo, recommend a solution. Tama nga ba na kinakailangan nating i-modify yung system? Kasi hindi na meet ng current system yung mga pangangailangan ng mga existing users. Okay, so the system analyst should develop a proposed solution without regard to any specific hardware of soft or software. Okay? Uh, during these activities, ang system analyst, kailangan gamitin niya lahat ng data and information gathering techniques. Kagaya ng napag-usapan na natin previously. Okay? As an addition, while studying the current system and identifying user requirements, ang system analyst should collect a great deal of data and information. And it should be documented, no? Yung mga findings na yan in a way that will be understood by everyone. Hindi lang yung siya lang yung nakakaintindi. And usually nga, gumagamit tayo dito ng mga diagrams or mga flow charting techniques para mas ma-represent ano yung process from the inputs to the outputs ano at kung paano ito gumagana. Okay? So that is our uh, detailed analysis. Now, kapag natapos na yung pag-analyze in details ng ating system O based doon sa mga kailangan nating i-consider yung mga activities. And then we propose, we, yung systems analyst will send a proposal or the system proposal. Ang purpose nito ay para ma-assess yung feasibility ng mga alternative solution. Usually naman, di ba kahit gumagawa tayo ng mga feasibility plan or kahit sa mga ibang mga research ano, hindi lamang tayo nagpo-provide ng isang solusyon. Usually meron tayong mga alternative Kasi what if that primary solution does not work? Do we have an alternative to that? Kailangan meron tayong backup plan. Okay? And then, saka tayo nag... So, parang pinipresent natin yung mga available solutions and then ano yung recommendation natin? Okay? What is the most feasible solution among those alternative solutions? Ito yung aking hinighlight dito. Ano? So, it may involve modifying the new system or mag-create ng panibago Okay, o maaring hindi lang talaga naiintindihan ng ano ng user, we can retain the existing system pero kailangan lang ng proper ano na implementation and proper training. Okay? So that is this system proposal is presented sa steering committee for approval. Okay? Now, once na na-approve na itong proposal ng steering committee, o dito na papasok yung design phase. Okay? But before we proceed sa design phase, Oh, please consider this one. When the steering committee discusses the system proposal and decides which alternative to pursue, ang mga kinoconsider niyan, either, o oh, sige, modify natin yung existing system. O kaya naman, bili tayo ng package system from outside source. Or gawa na lang tayo ng custom software. O kaya naman, i-outsource na lang natin ito. Okay? Ipapaliwanag ko ito ano, sa inyo na etong mga different options. 
Of course, yung number one, modify the existing system. Meron na tayong bago, uh, meron tayong existing, meron lang tayong kailangang baguhin. Yung pangalawa, which is uh, bibili ng package software. Pag sinabi natin na package software, okay, eto yung mga available na, na mga vendor software na bibilhin na natin, ano, at yun na rin mismo ang gagamitin natin. Kaya nga dito, ang explanation is, this is mass produced, copyrighted, pre-written software na available na, pwede na siyang gamitin outright. Wala na tayong ibang gagawin. Ang kinaibahan naman nito kasi sa uh, modified software, ano, yung custom built, is that wala ka nang gagawing iba pa. Okay? Automatic, no? Kung ano yung pagkabili mo nito, kung anong itsura niya, yun na yun. At umaakma ito sa yung ano, sa yung mga pangangailangan. Now, meron tayong dalawang klase ng system software or ng mga package software. Yung horizontal market software at saka yung vertical market software. Pag horizontal, kumbaga gen generic siya, no? Magagamit ito ng iba't ibang mga organizations. Pero pag vertical, it is specifically designed for a particular business or industry. May mga vendors naman kasi na nagki-cater ng mga horizontal market software at saka ng mga vertical market software. Okay, so these are available. Okay, we just have to identify where they are. No, we have to locate them. Okay, so that is our package software. Now, another option is mag-create na lang tayo. Mag-build tayo ng custom software. When we are building, we are building from scratch. Ang kagandahan kasi nito ano, is that it will match the organization's requirement. Kaya tayo nagbibuild ng customize, no, kino-customize natin para ma-meet natin yung pangangailangan. Kasi hindi available uh, yung mga package software, hindi nito na meet yung ating mga requirements kasi medyo unique yung ating operations. Kaya usually nagbibuild tayo ng custom software. Ang disadvantage nga lang dito kasi mas magastos. It will also consume your time kasi magde-develop ka talaga dito, no? Tapos i-implement pa natin siya. So, it is really time-consuming and investment intense, intensive or capital intensive. Okay? Oh. Now, we can also build custom software. So, pag tayo magde-develop, ang tawag natin diyan in-house. Pero pwede rin na i-outsource, no? Pag sinabi natin outsourcing, ibang gagawa nito para sa atin. Hindi natin mga empleyado. Okay? Hindi natin mga employee. So, yun yung tinatawag natin outsourcing. And outsourcing is a, ano no, uh, increasing yung exposure nito, especially today. Kasi may mga iba na mga companies na ayaw na nilang problemahin ito. Nakafocus lang sila doon sa core operations nila. So, they can outsource some of the business processes. Kasi actually, yung accounting pwedeng i-outsource na lang. Instead na mag-hire ako ng accountant. Okay, pwede naman akong kumuha ng, ano, ibang, ng mga consultants or kumuha ng mga ibang mga tao na mag outsource ng aking accounting department, mag outsource ng aking HR, mag outsource ng legal. So, halos ano, no, maraming mga, mga organizations yung ginagamit yung outsourcing para makapag-concentrate sila doon sa kanilang core business process. Okay? Now, so yun po ano yung ating mga options dito. Next! Dako na tayo dito sa design. O yung design, eto na yung pinaka-core ng system development. Kasi dito na tayo magde-develop ng system. Okay? The design phase consists of two major activities. Letter A, okay, acquire hardware and software if necessary, kung kinakailangan. At pangalawa, develop all of the details of the new or modified information system. Okay, now pag-usapan natin itong dalawang major activities. Dito muna tayo sa una, acquiring necessary hardware and software. Now, binubuo po yan ng apat. Okay, identify technical specifications followed by solicit vendor proposals. Pangatlo, test and evaluate vendor proposals and panghuli, make a decision. Okay, o, isa-isahin natin ito. Let's proceed with identifying technical specifications. Etong step na ito is to acquire the necessary hardware and software 
Okay? Sorry. The first... <laughs> okay, oh, pardon me, ano? The first step in acquiring necessary hardware and software is to identify all the hardware and software requirements of the new or modified system. Kasi, kung magde-develop ka ng panibagong system, ano yung technical specifications? Kailangan alam mo yon. So, we have to identify all of them. So, yung systems analyst, dapat alam niya ang gagawin niya. He, can, he or she ano no, knows what he or she is doing. And of course, yung mga data gathering techniques, ginagawa niya ito. Okay? So, that is the first step. Followed by the solicit vendor proposals. But before we proceed with this solicit vendor proposals, ano, meron kasi tayo ng tatlong klase ng documentations. Okay? Bago tayo mag-proceed dito, class ano. After the system analyst defines the technical requirements, ang susunod na step is to summarize these requirements for potential vendors. Okay, documentation is necessary. Of course, how do we identify? Siyempre, kailangan nating i-pinpoint yon. Pero dapat presented yon, ano para ma-identify natin. Kasi yung specifications na yon, yan yung ipapasa natin ano, pag naghahanap na tayo ng vendor. Okay, lalong-lalo na kung ipapagawa natin ito. Now, the system analyst can use three basic types of documents for this purpose. Maring RFQ, maring RFP, maring RFI. Pag sinabi natin RFQ, that is the request for quotation. Dito sa request for quotation, it identifies the required product. Okay? Ano ba ang required product? Ano ba ang kailangan mo? Okay? Then, yung vendor magkukot siya ng price for that product. Pag RFP, okay, or request for proposal, the vendor selects the product that meets the specified requirements and then magkukot siya ng price. Ano ang kaibahan nito sa RFQ? Sa RFQ, available lahat ng mga possible products at saka nandun yung price. Pero pagdating sa request for proposal, tukoy, okay, naka-identify. Ano yung kailangan? Okay, kung ako si vendor, okay, eto yung kailangan mo. O, eto, ipipresent ko sa iyo magkano ito. Samantalang, pag request for information or RFI, o, less formal method ito, ano, ang nire-request lang natin kung tayo yung part ng organization na mag-develop ng system. <coughs> Sorry, ah. <coughs> uh, pardon. Pardon. Apologies. Okay. Nasa mid ako dun. <laughs> oh, ulit lang. Pag RFI or request for payment, oh, this is a less formal method that uses a standard form to request information about a product or service. Okay. So, more information lang ito. Hindi ito yung quotation talaga na may pricing. Ano? So, more of information ng mga products na ino-offer ng vendor. Okay. So, that is the ano no, three types of documents. Now, after that, ano, this is the time that we can solicit for vendor proposals. Usually, uh, hindi lamang tayo kumukuha ng isang klase ng vendor. Kailangan ano, meron tayong iba't ibang mga proposals para mayroon tayong options. Makita natin alin dito yung pinaka the best at pinaka cost, no? Mas, mas makakamura tayo. Although, hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon kinoconsider natin yung mura kasi baka mamaya hindi naman pala quality yung ipoprovide sa atin. So, we will always have to check the balance. Kaya nga, medyo mahirap na decision yan in selecting the right person or right vendor to do our ano, no, uh, RB ding. Okay? Now, the system analyst will send the RFQ, the RFP, or the RFI to the vendor. Okay? Tapos, i-assess na natin yung mga proposals na ibinibigay nila. Meron tayong tinatawag na VAR o yung added, uh, value added reseller. Oh, from the term reseller, ito yung nagbabuy and sell. Ano? So, may mga iba kasing organization na bumibili ng mga produkto from the manufacturers directly and then, ibebenta din nila ito. So, system reseller sila. Ano? Tapos, nagta-top up na lang sila ng mga additional services doon sa product na binili nila from the manufacturer of the systems or of the software. Okay? So, that is one option also. O kaya naman, yung IT consultant, mag-hire sila. 
kasi yung IT consultant o eto yung uh, kukunin na lang nila para siya na or sila yung magko-configure ng hardware and software para doon sa pangangailangan ng organization. So, yun yung mga options, no? And then, yung pangatlo is to test and evaluate the vendor proposal. So, dito na tayo pipili. Okay? Alin ba pinaka-best option dito? Okay? Yung ibang mga vendors, nag-offer pa yan ng demo. Para, syempre, gusto nilang kunin yung benta na yun, ano? So, para ma-impress nila, ano, ma-please nila yung customer, uh, bigyan natin ng demo. Okay? Para mas maintindihan nila papaano gumagana yung system. And then, that is the time that they have to make it, uh, that is the time that they have to make a decision. Okay? So, eto ano, medyo mahirap ito, but of course, usually yung mga nasa decision, uh, yung mga nag nagde-decide para pumili ng best alternative, mga bihasa naman yan, at alam nila yung gagawin nila. Now, going back pala dito, ano, kasi meron akong na-skip, sa test and evaluate vendor proposals, meron tayong tinatawag na benchmark test. O, bago tayo mag-decide, ang benchmark test, no, ito yung, o, kinocompare natin yung mga vendor proposals, ano, from a benchmark. Pag sinabi natin benchmark, ito yung parang basis natin kung magiging effective ba or okay ba yung pipiliin nating alternative. Let's say, for example, a benchmark test could measure the time it takes a payroll program to print 50 paychecks. So, yung mga proposals ng iba, no, yung mga iba-ibang klase mga vendors, gaano ba katagal makapag-print sila ng 50 paychecks? Okay, so kung sino yung mas pinakamabilis, maaring ito yung mas pinaka-effective. Okay, so that is another consideration. Alright, sige. Oh, next, detailed design na tayo. Tapos na tayo dito sa um, acquiring necessary hardware and software. The next major area here is the detailed design. Sa detailed design, we develop the design for the database, for the inputs and outputs, and then for the program. Now, pag-usapan muna natin yung database design. Okay, and let me read it to you. The systems analyst works closely with the database analyst and database administrators to identify those elements that currently exist with the organization and those that are new. Okay? The system analyst also addresses user access privileges. This means that the system analyst defines which data elements its user access, when they can access, and what actions they perform, and under what circumstances they access the elements. Ang pinaka consideration dito is yung user access privilege. When designing the database, okay, o sino-sino yung mga may access? Ano-ano yung scope ng access nila? Okay? Ano-ano yung mga kinukuha nila? Bakit nila ito kinukuha? Ano ang ginagawa nila after you access a particular data element? Okay, kasi kailangan intindihin din niyang mabuti, ano? para sa pagde-develop ng panibagong design or panibagong system. Pagdating naman sa pagde-design ng inputs and outputs, okay, the system analyst carefully designs yung mga menu, yung mga screen, at saka yung mga report na specified. So, input, o papaano ba? Uh, papaano ba yung input mode ng mga users? Ano ba yung magiging output nito? Okay, now, in designing this input and output, ang tinitignan dyan usually is yung output. No? The out, etong may naka-underline tayo dito. The outputs often are designed first because they help define the requirements for the input. So, titignan mo muna yung finished product. Okay? Then, you work it back. Backwards, no? Para makita mo kung ito yung kailangan ko, anong kailangan ko sa input? Ano dapat ang uh, gagawin ko sa input, no? It is very important that outputs are identified correctly and that users agree to them. Now, meron tayong dalawang klase ng design output dito, no? Uh, design, sorry, uh, two types of design for each input and output. We have the mock-up and then the layout. Pag mock-up, ito yung parang itsura ng final product ng output natin. And it may contain the actual data. Pag layout, ito yung medyo technical pa, no? Kasi may mga programming notations pa tayo. Kunwari, dito makikita mo pa yung ating mga ano, no? 
mga lines lines okay so parang yung format ng pagkaka ano, yung design pa so those are some of the charts that are being used when de de uh, designing in, de in details okay oh next or additional items for the input and outputs the the systems analyst should also address these issues during the input and output design Ano ba yung kailangang media na gagamitin? Okay, papel ba yan, video or output? Ano yung format? Graphical ba yan or narrative? Paano yung data entry validation techniques? Kasi baka mamaya, ano, kung ano-ano lang yung mga ini-input, eh hindi naman pala dapat. Numerical ito, pero pati alphabet or special characters nakalagay. So, dapat may mga data entry validation. So, that limited lamang at tama yung ini-input. Okay para maging tama yung enter data. Okay. Now, sa pagdating naman sa program, sa program design, kailangan naman natin, okay, or on the part of the system analyst na makapag-prepare ng program specification package. Ang program specification package, it identifies the required programs. Yung relationship ng isa't isa. Pati na rin yung input, yung output, and the database specifications. Okay, so halos captured lahat, no? Yung database na gagamitin, yung input, yung output, at saka yung program na gagawa nito. Okay? Now, sa pagde-design ng mga system, meron tayong tinatawag na prototyping. Ang prototyping is a model. Okay? Prototype. Ibig sabihin, ah, uh, Kung ano no, nakapanood na kayo ng mga videos on how to make a car, bago gumawa ng isang actual na car unit, meron silang working model. Yung model ng isang sasakyan, ano, para makita kung papaani magiging itsura nito, actual, kapag ginawa na talaga ito. Ang prototype, kaya nga dito, ano, meron akong in-underline, that is a working model of the proposed system. Okay. So, gumagawa muna usually ang mga systems analyst ng mga functional form ng system bago talaga actual ma na ma-implement. Para kung sakali may mga system bugs, yung mga system errors, nakikita pa rin nila ito sa prototype. Kasi yung prototype, ito na yung parang magiging basis. So, kung okay ito, maganda, at least dito pa lang sa prototype, na i-correct na at makikita na gumagana na before ginagawa yung actual talaga na system. Okay. As soon as users approve a prototype, the system analyst can implement a solution more quickly than without a prototype. Mahirap kasi na dumiretso agad. Mag-create agad ng, ng actual, ng live system, tapos hindi mo pa napapractice, hindi mo pa natse-check kung sakali mang may mga bugs. So better, prototyping muna tayo. Maraming mga systems analyst yung gumagamit din ng mga computer software para tulungan sila sa system development. Okay, ang tawag natin doon ay mga case tools. For example, we have the Computer Aided Software Engineering or the CASE. Okay? Which is designed to support one or more activities of system development. Oh, class case tools, ano? Oh, medyo gra ano ako, OC ako, so palakihin natin yung lahat. So yan po yung ibig sabihin ng case tool. Computer Aided Software Engineering. Another one that they have to consider during the detailed design is the quality review techniques. Okay? Dito, sa quality review techniques, kailangan i-involve yung mga users para ma-review din nila. Let's say, yung prototype, nakita na nila. So, papaano nga ba ito? Para at least malaman nila kung may mga kailangan pang i-consult or kailangan pang paayos or mga revisions. Okay? In terms of the specific de uh, design, no? yung detailed specifications ng program or ng system. Okay? Oh, after that, kapag feasible na yan at pinayagan na ng steering committee, of course, implement na natin yan. Implementation. Nakapag-design na tayo, then we have to implement it. Ang implementation phase, binubuo yan ng apat. We have to develop the program now. We have to install and test the new system. We have to train the users and then we have to convert the new system. Okay? Ang purpose po nitong implementation phase ay makapag-construct. Dito kasi, building eh. Okay? Sa, sa naunang step, ano? Design phase. So, dito, yung building na ng actual na program. 
and then implementation, no? subsequent implementation. Now, for the developing of the programs, o, dito na tayo gumagawa talaga. Okay? O, it really depends pa paano yung setup. May gagawa ba pa para sa'yo? Or, o, eto ba ay in-house? Or eto ba ay naka-outsource? Or yung package talaga na binili natin and then we modify it? It really depends. Now, kung meron tayong SDLC, meron ding program development life cycle. Okay? Pagdating doon sa pagde-develop ng program. Itong program development cycles, ito yung mga list of development activities na sinusundan para makapag-develop na ng program. Okay? Now, after developing the program, we should install it and we should test it. Kailangan nating install no para guma gumana at subukan natin ito bago tayo mag-go live. Now, meron tayong iba't ibang mga klasing tests na ginag ginagawa ng mga systems analyst at saka ng mag maging ng mga users ano para ma-test. So, meron tayo sa tinatawag na test data. Eh. Ma-encounter nyo rin again itong test data pagdating ninyo sa auditing. Okay? Ang test data ginagamit para mag-test ng mga programs. no Mag-test ng system. Meron tayong tinatawag na unit test. Pag unit test, we verify that each individual program or object works by itself. Okay? Pag system test naman, ang bini-verify natin is that all programs in an application work together. Pag unit test, kada individual program. Pag system test, they, do they function all together? Pag integration test, yung application ba, nagbo-work ba yan, gumagana ba yan with other applications? Okay? Pag acceptance test, eto naman yung pinay-perform ng mga end users okay, to check the new system ano, at masigurado na gumagana ito using actual data na. Okay? So, ito po yung mga iba't ibang klase ng pagtitest ng bagong system. Para dapat, no, smooth yung operations. Wala na tayo makitang mga problems. Okay? And then, of course, pag meron na tayong bagong system, kailangan natin i-train yung mga users kung paano ito gagawin. Otherwise, mahirapan sila. Kasi pag may bagong system, may mga pag bagong programs na ginagamit, kailangan i-train yung users na gagamit dito. Kasi hindi naman pwede na mangangapa na lang sila. Okay? It can be 101 or classroom style. But usually, mga classroom style lectures yan. At dapat, meron po yung mga hands-on training. May mga iba na, na web-based na. Pinondohan ano, pinag, ano, pinaghandaan, may web-based training para pwedeng balik-balikan. Okay? So, yun naman po yun. And then, we have to convert to the new system. Now, kasi, syempre, meron tayong old system. Old na kasi meron na tayong bago, yung new. So, yung implementation, yung final implementation, from the old to the new, it can either be a direct conversion, a parallel conversion, a phase conversion, and a pilot conversion. Pag sinabi natin direct conversion, direct na. Okay? Wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa. Ihinto na natin yung lumang system, gamitin na natin yung bago. Okay, that is direct conversion. Pag parallel conversion, habang pinapatakbo pa yung lumang system, umpisahan na rin natin yung bagong system. Parallel. Okay, gumagana pa yung luma, paunti-unti ano, hanggang uh, pinapagana na rin natin yung bago hanggang sa pwede na nating pagpahingahin yung old system. That is parallel conversion. Pag phase conversion naman, pa-isa-isa. Pa okay? Naka-phase, no? Each location converts at a separate time. Okay? Halimbawa, sa isang accounting information system, syempre, magkakaibang mga modules yan. Oh, it may convert first the, accounting rece the accounts receivable followed by the accounts payable, the GL, saka yung mga payroll sites. <coughs> Now, it may be ano, no? a direct or parallel conversion. Basta pag phase, pa isa-isa. Pag direct, lahatan. Pag parallel, gumagana pa yung luma, gagana na rin yung bago. Pag phase, paunti-unti. But it can be a direct or a parallel. Yung panghuli naman, yung pilot, meron tayong test na isa. Pag okay na yon, and the, and the, pwede na natin i-convert no yung uh, yung bago gamitin na natin ito pilot conversion naman ang tawag natin diyan okay so that is the implementation phase 
Now, for the last part, yung operation, support, and security, okay, oh, this is the ongoing assistance. Kaya nga, ang tawag dyan sa iba, maintenance phase. Okay, we, we maintain the program. We perform maintenance activities, we monitor system performance, and then we assess system security. At kapag, when we assess the system security at saka may mga bagong user requirements na wala, pa do, wala na naman doon sa bagong ano, system, o eto na naman yung mag initiate ng planning phase. Kaya nga, naka-loop yan, ano, umiikot lang po yan. Okay? O, information system maintenance activities includes o, fixing errors. Although, normally, dapat yung mga errors na fix na yan bago pa man i-implement kasi we fix the bugs. But we also improve the system's operations. Okay? So, dito, meron tayong tinatawag na post-implementation system review. After we implement, we review. Is it effective? Is it working? May mga lapses pa na nakikita. May mga problema ba na na-encounter yung mga bagong users when the system was implemented. Okay? During this phase, the system analyst monitors performance of the new or modified information system. The purpose of the information of the performance monitoring is this, no? To determine whether the system is inefficient or unstable at any point. Pero dapat hindi po 'yan ganyan. Kasi na test dapat 'yan ng maayos unless may mga lapses sa process, no? Medyo may mga hindi nagawa ng maayos. Pero kung ginawa naman ng tama 'yung mga steps, dapat working functional no yung ating bagong system now sa mga malalaking organizations meron silang mga CSO or the chief security officer that is in charge for the physical security of the organization's property for the maintenance okay and securing yung mga computing resources as part of their maintenance ano or the operation support and security phase operation support and security. So, dito siya more of magpo-fall sa security, secondary da lang din, yung support. Okay? O, oh, another one. As part of the role or the responsibility of the chief security officer, meron dapat kinagawa or dinedevelop na computer security plan. Kasi etong security plan na ito, eto yung safeguards, eto yung mga measures, no? Na naka-in place para mapangalagaan yung mga information assets. Remember, when we are talking of assets, in general, ano, uh, hindi lamang sa accounting, pinag-uusapan din natin dito yung iba't iba pang mga assets ng company. Okay, which may, either, uh, which may either be monetary or non-monetary. Although, pag mga information, pag mga software, oh, on the side of accounting, di ba, kinakategorize natin yan as intangibles. Okay, so sa computer security plan, let Uh, let me tell you that these are the safeguards. Okay? Hindi yan yung sabot. <laughs> okay? The safeguards, the measures that are in place to protect the organization's information security. No? However, when so, so doing, dapat yung security nagmamatch yan doon sa identified risks. Okay? To match an appropriate level of safeguards against the identified risk. But, okay, luckily, Fortunately, sabi nga dito sa sa ano, sa material, karamihan sa mga organizations will never experience a major information system disaster. Very few ano, selected lang yan. Okay? So hanggang dito muna no, yung katapusan ng ating ano, a part 2 for the information system development para sa susunod na lecture, separate discussion naman tayo on the programming language. Okay? Uh, thank you, class. Let me know if you have questions. Pero kung wala naman, I'll see you later for the programming language part. Bye-bye.